Hey everyone, it is Vian from Mountain Road Ride here and today we're going to be talking about gravel bikes but one gravel bike in particular and that is my dream gravel bike. So I'll begin this by saying that sometimes in life it's nice to just daydream a little bit and that is what today is going to be all about. So if you've come here with the expectation of seeing another $10,000 plus kind of bike all the parts laid out and you know that being put together i'm sorry to disappoint you today we are purely going to be talking about a hypothetical setup that i consider as my absolute dream gravel bike so hey you know what if you're out there you're watching this channel right now hit that subscribe button like this video head over to our blog and go and support us there as well and then who knows maybe just one day I could actually build this bike that I'm going to describe to you today so we're going to do a bit of window shopping essentially modern day window shopping and I'm going to walk you through each of the components that I would fit to the absolute perfect dream gravel bike that uh, I have envisioned and uh, that is what we're going to do we're going to walk through all different parts and I'll show you um, how each of those things will fit together to form just the absolute beautiful bike should this ever come to realization. All right, so before we head into all those various components and start building this bike, let's just talk about what this bike is um, and it'll help explain a little bit about my specific needs when it comes to gravel riding because I think that is very important when it comes to a dream build is that you build it custom to your particular needs. So judging from what you can see behind me that is the 3T Exploro. This is the Pro GRX model and I've actually done a, a fairly extensive review on this particular bike already. So if you want to check that out do follow the links that I'll provide and you can see all the ins and outs about this specific model. But I think this will kind of tip you off a little bit about what I like in a gravel bike. I come from a road background, I still do a lot of road riding, and uh, occasionally I will venture off on some trails. I've got a nearby park that I like to ride on, and we've got some epic um, country gravel roads um, not too far from here that I also like to ride on. So I need a bike that can kind of be a little bit of both. Um, road riding compatible, still quick, zippy on the road, and then also equally capable off-road um, when it comes to gravel riding and also some more technical trails. And I found that is exactly what the 3T Explorer allows me to do. It's a bike that can change between 650B and 700C wheels and uh, that just gives it incredible versatility. Now that same characteristic is what I want in my dream gravel build because you might be listening to this now and say well if this bike is so perfect then uh, what are we doing you know like any true cycling nerd when you look at your bike you know you can always just identify those little things or little areas where um, you'd like to upgrade, improve, and you know, just make it that a little bit more enhanced. All right, so I'll pull up on the screen for you now the 3T Explorer website. So surprise, surprise, my perfect dream gravel build um, will be based on the 3T Explorer frame set. Um, but instead of going for the Pro frame set that you see behind me here, um, I will of course bump up my expectation and uh, I'll go for the top of the line. I think you know this frame set, if you look at their product lineup, as you can see on the screen um, and you go over to the far end and that is where you get the Exploro limited frame set. Now this frame set weighs in at only around 990 grams um, for the medium size so I think that is a killer weight for a, a, an off-road um, capable bike. Now, I was kind of torn between two different options. I wasn't just going flat out for uh, a 3T Explorer when I think of what my dream frame looks like. I'm actually a little bit biased, but biased towards a particular designer. And that one designer is uh, Gerard Fruman. And uh, for those diehards out there, you'll probably know a company that he also created in the form of Open, um, and they sell some really neat frames as well. Um, I, you know, I think you can go back and forth between these two designs. It's really neat to, to see his 
is influence in both those two companies. Now, the open on the one side comes in a little bit lighter if you go for that open upper. Um, that's even 880 grams for a medium sized frame. So if you wanna go for something like that, super light, um, then I think the, the open upper, um, pretty neat, neat frame selection also. But um, in my instance, I think, you know, I'm still a little bit of a sucker for uh, a few things, aerodynamics. And uh, that's why, you know, my selection of a dream gravel build will be based on the Exploro Limited frame set. All right, so now with the frame selected, we're gonna head over into the wheel selection. Now, because the frame allows me to run so many different options, that Gravel Plus design that you find with both the Open um, as well as with the 3T Explorer um, just opens up so many opportunities for different kinds of wheels. Um, so I don't want to kind of limit myself to one wheel selection only. Um, I think in building the perfect dream gravel bike why the heck not just go for two wheel sets so we're going to look at one 700c option and then also one smaller option that can be used for more of the rugged off-road stuff now up on the screen you can now see that uh, for my 700c option um, i would actually opt to go with a beautiful set of nv wheels uh, specifically the ses 3.4 all-road disc version i think these are incredibly versatile um, wheel sets and i've seen the likes of you know colin strickland um, ride these kind of wheel sets and just about any type of condition so you think of that belgium waffle ride scenario where they switch so so many times between road as well as off-road conditions and this kind of wheel set is absolutely perfect for those kind of riding conditions and um, I would see this as an absolute perfect selection for a, a, a bike that can do just about anything to you know, give it a wheel set that can be equally as versatile. Now, what makes this wheel set pretty neat as well, up on the screen you can see that you've got different options for hub selection. So if you're really into customizing your bike, um, then you've got the option to go with either a Chris King or an Industry 9 um, hub set as well. And I think that is exactly what I would do. Um, if I could build my dream gravel bike and fit it with these wheels, then uh, I'll definitely go with those Chris King um, hubs to just sweeten the deal a little bit more. They're just incredible wheels. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the details. Do take a time to, to look through my blog post, but also through this website, and you can see um, just all the specifications specifically around how it's been designed um, with a fairly wide external width to just give you the ability to run so many tire combinations on this wheel set. Now, speaking of different tire combinations, this is where we can go over into my second wheel set selection. And this is gonna be a little bit different. And maybe not the one that you've uh, completely anticipated. Um, I am gonna go over into maybe a lesser known company um, in Zentis. And they offer this really neat um, gravel option. As you can see, the Kappa 2. Um, and oh, this one is just an eye catcher. I think that is the biggest reason why I would go with this particular wheel set. It's a 27 and a half inch wheel set. Um, that in a frame like this will give you just an exceptional tire clearance and you can run you know much much wider um, off-road tires um, on a wheel set like this but other than that just think of that design if you look at this four spoke design that comes with a bike such as this um, you know in terms of maintenance and in terms of not having to true the wheel set um, when you really hammer a wheel set like this off-road um, I think you know it just gives you that a little bit more of a maintenance free experience and you know think of how easier it would be to to wash off some mud on on a on a wheel set like this so this one particularly i think you know is a bit more of an odd choice but oh man i can just see you know heads turning with that wheel set on a 3d explorer limited and i would love to see that happen so who knows maybe one day my dream gravel bike can be equipped with both that ACS um, 3.4 from envy and then also this kappa 2 from zentis All right, we're gonna continue along with my window shopping. Um, now, I know this is obviously not the most conventional way of putting together a dream gravel build, but um, it's just so much fun to scroll through all these different websites and see um, unique products. And one such unique product is gonna bring me to the brakes. And I know this is a, a, an odd 
place to go to for sort of the third step in a gravel build. But you're gonna see how the selection of a brake caliper is actually gonna have a bit of a knock-on effect to the other parts and um, it's gonna change up the setup quite a bit. Now, the brake caliper that I am referring to is the Yokozuna Ultimo um, hydraulic brake system. Now, what makes this one unique is, and actually it's a contained hydraulic brake system, where the hydraulics is found in the caliper and um, it's cable actuated. So that means that with this particular setup, if you are out in the middle of nowhere and uh, something goes wrong with your brakes, um, you'd most likely be able to, to fix it yourself, um, seeing that it is cable based. It also makes installation 10 times easier when you don't need all those bleeding kits. Um, now, I've seen some reviews on this particular um, brake caliper and uh, it looks pretty good. You know, we think we've seen so many uh, mechanical disc brakes in the past that haven't been performing that well. Um, this one actually breaks that norm. All right, so moving along with our window shopping, we've got the frame, we've got the wheels, and we've got some brakes fitted now. Let's get over to those shifters. Like I said in that previous step, um, the shifters will now have to be cable-based. And for my shifting experience, I would want to step it up a notch um, and go just complete wireless. I think, you know, that just makes the bike look so super sleek, um, no cables. And it, again, um, for me, you'll hear this uh, reoccurring theme, you know, the ease of installation that comes with complete wireless shifting um, is just phenomenal so I will definitely opt to go with SRAM's um, red ETAP access system and so up on the screen right now you can see you actually do get two options you get one that is a shift brake lever so that will be more for the mechanical rim brakes traditionally so cable based system and then obviously your more common one that you see these days on most of the high-end bikes is the hydraulic system so um, seeing that I've opted to go for kind of a, a bit of a, a different selection in terms of the brake calipers, this will then have to be the selection. If I want to go with a full wireless system on my dream gravel bike, this particular shifter from SRAM offers exactly what I need in terms of being cable based and then still being the wireless connection. So over into the crank system next. now. First of all, you clearly have to ask the question, do you want one by or do you want a two by setup? And I've gone back and forth on that debate so many times. On the one hand, you know, you've got all the gears that you need on a two by, but you've got this minimalistic, almost mathematical, beautiful setup with a one by where you just have this perfect continuum um, in terms of your gear. So obviously both have um, their pros and their cons, two by, um, a little bit more cluttered, one by sleek, easy to clean, looks just looks really good in my opinion. So it's got its pros, it's got its cons, but let's now think of what I would go for if uh, I could build my dream setup. And uh, I think at the end of the day, I'm just gonna stick with the one by, um, same as what you see on this bike, um, just the ease of maintenance and cleaning and everything that comes with it um, just makes it a fantastic choice. And uh, this is where I'm gonna sort of uh, tip you off that uh, I'm a pretty big fan of 3T um, when you see my selection for the crank set. In fact, we're gonna go back over to 3T's website and that's what you're gonna see up on the screen right now. So there it is. The crank set of choice would be 3T's Torno um, crank set. What a just phenomenal piece of machinery. Um, I mean, look at that thing, it's a uh, lightweight, it's super sleek, um, it's Italian made. Um, how much better can it get, you ask? Um, and I would actually claim that, you know, can get a little bit better because um, the chain ring that they fit to this particular crank set is in fact a wolf tooth component. Um, and for me, that's just the perfect merger of two brilliant companies, both in 3T and then also in Wolf Tooth. Um, so that's my selection. I think it looks super sweet. Um, and in terms of uh, the sizing, I would go for a size uh, 44 tooth chain ring in the front. And you'll see how I'm gonna get away with that slightly bigger chain ring um, for gravel riding when we go over into the next step. And that's gonna be the drivetrain. So let's check that out and see what I would fit to the bike if we could pick just the perfect components for my gravel build. 
All right, so we've covered the shifters and in that particular step, I explained that I would go with the red access ETAP shifters. Um, so let's complete the whole shifting experience and talk about what I would fit to a dream gravel build um, in terms of the drivetrain. Um, now, this is where the whole access group set just becomes incredibly useful um, with that cross compatibility um, between all the different products. And, um, and now this will allow me to actually build a, a pretty neat mullet setup, you know, with the road shifters in the front and then a mountain biker set in the back. So I would in fact go with the Eagle Access um, derailleur at the back and then fit that with the Eagle cassette and that has that 500% um, range. So you go from a, a 10 tooth sprocket all the way through to a 50 tooth sprocket. So think of that now in combination with that chain ring that I described earlier, the 44. Um, so that just gives you phenomenal range. Um, and for me, that is exactly what I would want in an all round kind of bike that I can just go and ride just about anywhere. So that kind of Eagle access group set um, in combination with the red um, will just make this a super sweet bike. Um, definitely dream bike worthy. All right, so we've got the frame selection, we've got the wheels, we've got the drivetrain, and we've also got the brakes selected for this dream gravel belt. Next, we're gonna talk about the handlebars and then also the stem that I would fit it to such a dream build. Um, again, I'm gonna show my bias towards a particular company and I'm gonna go back to that 3T website yet again. Um, this time, we're gonna talk about a brand new gravel handlebar that they have just released um, in the form of the Aero Giaia. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, this follows after their success that they've had with the Super Giaia. Um, and uh, you know, what makes this handlebar so unique is the fact that it can actually maintain the correct positions of the hood, so it does not rotate those hoods in. Um, being a pure roadie, I just, you know, as much as the flare of a, um, a gravel bar appeals to me, I just can't get around the fact that that also bends in your hoods. And um, this is not the case when you look at the 3T handlebars, um, specifically the Super and also the Aero Giaia. Um, so that component for me definitely ticks the right sort of box. But then at the same time, after you follow along on the handlebars, right beneath the hoods is where you see the flare kick out. All right, so next up, we're going into the stem selection. And for me, the stem is a part of a bike that I don't want to compromise on. Um, I will definitely opt for strength over lightweight componentry any day, especially when it relates to the stem selection. And so for me, I'm not going to go with the lightest and greatest stems in the world. Um, for my dream gravel build, I would just go with a very modest zip service core stem. I think that gives me that uh, aluminum um, stem. And I've seen enough articles out there that suggest that that's actually a pretty good selection when you go with a carbon handlebar to in fact also have um, aluminum um, stem paired with that. So uh, that's my selection. Short and sweet of why I would go with the Zip Service Cores stem. All right, so we're getting close to the end of my dream gravel build setup. Um, just a few smaller parts that we need to fit to this imaginary bike to complete the picture. Um, if you've been following along, then uh, you'll surely know that uh, we're still missing a bottom bracket. Um, we're missing a saddle. We're missing some tires and we are also missing some pedals on this particular bike. So let's start off with the bottom bracket. First of all, with the bottom bracket, um, I'm gonna go with the ceramic option on this one. I think, you know, people are sort of um, still debating whether it's truly offering, you know, all the benefits that it claims to do, but uh, I think there's enough evidence that it actually can add just to a, a more comfortable ride. So for my um, bottom bracket selection, I would actually go with one of the Kogel options. Um, Kogel is a US based manufacturer and uh, if you look at their product lineup, it's just a, a really good selection. Just about any kind of bottom bracket that you can um, hope for is in that lineup. And uh, what I do like about their selection is the fact that you can pick between a road and also a cross bearing. And that is the option I would go for when picking my gravel bottom bracket is to um, pick that cross option. I think it just gives you a little bit more strength um, under those rougher loads when riding along. 
Going over into the tire selection there, I think I'm not going to go into incredible detail. I think, you know, tires will differ from one application to the other. And judging by the two wheel selections that I've uh, stated, you know, I would just about be able to run uh, any kind of tire that there is on offer. Um, and so that is why um, I would rather just say that uh, just for the sake of being complete, um, and since I like these tires so much that I've uh, put together a separate review on them, I would just start off the build with the WTB Nano tires um, and then uh, the application from there on out would dictate the type of tire needed for a particular riding condition. Over into the saddle, the saddle again is not a part of a bike that I'm too particular fussy about. I've never been um, that bothered by saddles that came as stock options on the bike. I feel like I can adapt to them fairly quickly. But since this is a, a dream gravel build, why the heck not just go with something that uh, I've uh, always seen as a very attractive saddle and the physique. Arihoni saddle. So uh, that would be my selection just to round off the top part of the bike and uh, just give it that super sleek profile as with all the other components. Then into the last step of this puzzle and that is the pedals. Now if you've also been listening very carefully you would definitely have detected that this very high-end bike is it you know is currently built up in my head um, does not have a power meter on um, on that bike just yet. So uh, we're gonna have to cover both those bases in this last step, pedals and power meter in one go. So if you're thinking, yep, that's a simple solution, slap on some power pedals, this is a gravel bike. And so hence we need to be reminded that uh, right now there isn't really a, a mountain bike power meter option on the market. And uh, SRM is getting pretty close to launching their product, but at the time of recording, um, that is not yet a product that is commercially available. So we can't make that assumption that I can fit it to my bike. And uh, this is where I'm gonna go over into the Vivero Asiomo power pedal hack. Um, so maybe you've seen some of the videos out there that uh, show you how to take the power units from the Favero pedals um, and then combine that with the pedal body from the Expedo mountain bike pedals. Um, those two in combination gives me exactly what I need and that is what I would fit to my dream gravel build is to have the Favero Asihomo dual-sided power meter, meters pedals on my bike um, but then convert it with those Expedo pedals. So, um, yep, power and pedals all in one go, completing and rounding off my dream gravel build. All right, so there you have it. That is my imaginary dream gravel build. I hope you enjoy this little trip down imagination lane with me um, I think you know sometimes it's just necessary to do this kind of daydreaming especially in the tough times that we live right now who says that you can't just go and do a bit of window shopping and dream up what you could do if there was absolutely zero restrictions on any of the resources or funds out there so yep that is my imaginary dream gravel build I hope you like this um, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And uh, we'll be back in the future with more cycling, running, and gravel related content here on Mountain Road Ride. That's it, I'm Vian from Mountain Road. See you next time.